By definition, a pivot table is a way you can quickly summarize and analyze selected columns and rows of data, not just columns, but also rows. In other words, when you open up a table or a query, double click, you get columns of data. Well, when you create a pivot table based upon this query, you can also create pivot tables based upon tables and also forms, but when you go ahead and create one, in the template view of the pivot table, you can go ahead and set the fields to be also row headers, not just column headers. And of course, they'll display their corresponding data to the right of each uh, row header and below each column header. Not only that, but you also get the option to pivot or filter in or out those records you want to see or don't want to see, just like you can in here by clicking on the drop down arrow and unchecking those that you don't want to see and clicking OK. Now, before I get started, I want to find out what table or tables this query is based upon by right clicking on it going to the design view, it's based upon these four tables. And then down in the grid below, I pulled some of the fields, not all the fields. So when I create a pivot table, it's going to be based upon these fields here, down below in the grid. To do that, come up here, right click on the tab. Now up until this point, we've been discussing design view and data sheet views. Well now we're going to the pivot table view. Here, it has a template in the center, and over to the right it has the fields. All the fields that were available that we added to the grid in the design view, well, except these two are extras. In other words, I have a field in that grid. It's called the sales date because the data type field is a date. Access also added the uh, same name, but by week and by month. When I set up my uh, pivot table, instead of just specific transaction dates, I can have them grouped by week or by month. Well, even by quarters and by years, but I'll show you that in just a second. So over here, you got four fields, and it's telling you what to do. It's saying, okay, from your field list, well, it doesn't say that, but it says, drop your fields here one for your column or two for your column or as many as you'd like for your row fields and then also for your details. I'll talk about the filter field in just a second but right now for a basic setup what are the details you want to view and what are going to be their uh, column or row header fields. Now you just don't come over here and willy-nilly click and drag everything onto here because garbage in is garbage out but when it comes to setting up your pivot table you want to make sure you're familiar with the field list here and ask yourself what do I want to view. Well what I want to view is I want to view the customer's name also, the uh, sales date, we'll do sales date by month. And for the details, I would like for each month by customer, the retail cost they paid, and then the wholesale cost we paid, and then get the difference, because that's our profit. So to set this up, I just need to uh, do what it says here. Click and drag the customer name. Now the customer name isn't going to be the detail here, not for me. The detail is going to be those uh, retail and wholesale cost fields. So I'm either going to drag it to the row field or the column field. I'm going to do it to the row field. I mean, it's a matter of preference. If you don't like it, you can always move it over to the uh, other field there. But you'll notice that when I click and drag that field, it looks like a flying candy bar. We'll hover over the row field in this case until it turns blue, the border, and then let go, and it dumps the uh, customers there. And it's got the filter drop down arrow. I can click on it and uncheck those that I don't want to see and click OK. But there's no point in doing it now because, well, I have no details for these customers yet. But before I add that, I also want to be able to view the customers by uh, date, not specifically sales date that, well, let me show you. If I click and drag that up here, it's specifically the transaction date. But instead, I want to do it by month. So what I can do if I made a mistake is to click and drag that and move it up until you see a red X just below your pointer and let go. It removes it. So I can come down here and select sales date by month. And the other way to add it, instead of clicking and dragging, is to come down here and click on the drop down arrow. Say you want to add it to the column area, and then click Add To, and it adds it. Now I know it says it by years. I'll show you in just a minute after I set everything else up how we can break that down. Not only by month, but before that, quarters, then months, and then you can do it by weeks. Okay, then the details between the two for the customer and, well, the year for now, is going to be the wholesale cost retail. So I'll click one, hold down the Shift key, select the other, then click and drag both and dump them there. There we go. My client here, Big News Network, has purchased or made some orders here. And of this first order here, the retail cost they paid was 404 and the wholesale cost we paid was 285 so we get a nice little tidy profit there. Mm, I'd like to take this a step further. Instead of just by customer and figuring out the profits, I'm really curious now about our products, the books. Which one's selling the most and which one are we making the most profit on? So what I want to do is come over here, select book title, and click and drag that up to the filter field here. Now there's a hierarchical structure going on here. You have the, the column header and row header, which filter the details here. And then the filter field up at the top filters the column and row headers collectively, which in turn filters the details section down below. So for example, if I click on the uh, book title drop-down arrow, 
and I uncheck all, and I say oh, I want to see um, what our profits are for 101 pizza combinations. Check that. Click okie dokie. Well, first of all, we don't have that many customers purchasing the book, but of at least the one who did, Ghost Hunters America, they purchased, it looks like, quite a bit in one order. Uh, retail cost and the difference with the wholesale. Sweet. We made some uh, nice profit there. Now you notice that up here it says pizza combinations, so that's what's being filtered or what you're viewing here. That's one clue. The other clue is is that you see that blue arrow used to be black. That means that this field's being filtered. So click on the drop down arrow, check all again, click okie dokie. So you can filter by the book title, and then once it narrows it down, then go ahead and you can filter by customer name, narrow it down some more, or by the years or the months, which I'll show you in just a second. But before I do that, instead of just calculating in my head the difference between the retail and the wholesale, I can go ahead and add a calculating total field here for the difference between the two. And to do that, come up here on the Design tab to the Tools group, click on the Formula drop-down arrow, and click on Create Calculated Detail Field. When you click on it, it automatically adds it, but it's not calculating anything until we set up the properties here, which is very simple. On the Calculation tab, I don't want the name to be calculated. Let's have it make sense and call it our profits. And then come down below in the field here, and the calculation is zero. We actually have to enter in, well, the two fields that we want to calculate is the retail cost minus the wholesale, so let's delete that, square bracket, retail, cost, close square bracket, minus, open square bracket, and of course it's not case sensitive, so you don't have to do uppercase, and then close square bracket. By the way, as a side note, a shortcut, if the name of my fields were just a single name, just retail and wholesale. I wouldn't have to use square brackets here. I could just go ahead and use retail minus wholesale. But because it has a space and it's got, uh, well, the added uh, name here, cost, we put them in square brackets. So when uh, Access looks at this, it knows to keep these together because that's the name of the field. And then when I'm finished, come down here and click change. When I click change, watch the calculated field here update. Hey, profits. Makes it so much easier, doesn't it? to be able to calculate that up. Now it's not in currency, so I'm going to go ahead and click on the Format tab. Come down here and change it from General to Currency. There we go. Looks better, doesn't it? Then we'll go ahead and close the box. And you can come up here and click and drag that, move it over to the right. In fact, let's click and drag and move Retail over here. So we have Retail minus Wholesale gives us our profits. Let me go ahead and close out of the field list, which if you lose it, again, come up here, Design tab, to the Show High Group, click Field List, but I'm going to close out. If I scroll down to the bottom, I don't get a total total, do I? If I want to get a total total, let me scroll back up to the top, click on the uh, Profits column header, and then come up here on the Design tab to the Tools group, click on Auto Calculate drop down arrow, go ahead and click on Sum, give it a second, and there we go. Hey, pretty neat. So cool, we've got the uh, Sum for uh, Big News Network, 341, and then if you scroll down to the bottom, we get the total sum of our profits for all our sales keep scrolling down. As you can see as I keep scrolling down, give it a second, and this updates it as it refreshes and adds more uh, data here. So the grand total of profit that we made, 2008, was $19,000. Let me scroll back up. And then if I want to be able to hide the details or show the details, after I hide them, just come up here on the Design tab to the Show Hide group, click on Hide Details. And then if I want to be able to see the details, you can either click on this to expand it, or let me go ahead and uh, come up here and click on Hide again and then come up here and click on Show Details to expand them all. And that's why it was listing twice, because you have the sum of the profits here giving us the total here, and then we also have it over here to the right-hand side as the grand total. Oh, and you didn't remind me, did you? We need to go ahead and make sure that uh, we break this down, not just by years, but into months. So if you go ahead and click on the plus sign to expand it, well, you get the quarters, and you expand the quarters, you get the months here. So if you want to be able to just view it by month and not have the quarter and the year up above, just go ahead and, well, let's start with the year, click and drag the year, move it up and let go, gets rid of the years. Then we have it filtered by quarters and by months. You can expand the quarters again if you want to, just that it shows both. So we can click and drag the quarters up here till we see the red X, let go, removes it, and now we have it by month. And then, when, of course, when you're finished, be sure to save your work. Come up here, click on the Save button. And by the way, if you don't like the months, just click and drag it off. And then come back here and click on Field List and then click and drag sales date by month and drag it back there so I'm back to years. And then if I want to go ahead and go back to the data sheet view, just right click, go to the data sheet view, and if I go back to my uh, pivot table view, right click, pivot table, keeps it, doesn't remove it unless of course you don't save it. Thanks for watching. 
Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.